Pascal's Wager was a theological argument presented by 17th century philosopher Blaise Pascal, positing that everyone is essentially involved in a lifelong gamble regarding belief in the existence of God. Pascal's contention was that every rational person should adopt a lifestyle consistent with the existence of God, and believe, or at least strive to believe, in God. He reasoned that if God doesn't exist, then believers would incur only minor losses from being incorrect, such as potentially sacrificing certain worldly pleasures or luxuries. However, if God does exist, believers stand to gain immensely, especially those of the Abrahamic faiths, which promise an eternal afterlife in heaven, while simultaneously avoiding an eternity of burning in hell. Pascal wrote, If there is a God, he is infinitely incomprehensible, since, having neither parts nor limits, he has no affinity to us. We are then incapable of knowing either what he is or if he is. God is or he is not. But to which side shall we incline? Reason can decide nothing here. There is infinite chaos that separated us. A game is being played at the extremity of this infinite distance where heads or tails will turn up. What will you wager? According to reason, you can do neither the one thing nor the other. According to reason, you can defend neither of the propositions. But you must wager. It is not optional. You are embarked. Which will you choose, then? Pascal argues that the existence or non-existence of God are inherently impossible to prove through human reasoning. Therefore, rather than attempting to determine the ultimate truth between the two options, the best we can do is make our metaphysical wager by weighing out the possible consequences. Believers are divinely promised eternity in heaven and to be saved from eternity in hell, whereas non-believers are barred from heaven and condemned to eternity in hell. So if God exists, then the believer's wager provides the ultimate payout, and if God doesn't exist, then the believer isn't really out anything at all. In contrast, the non-believer gains nothing from their disbelief, but stands to lose everything if they are wrong. If your wager is correct, you gain eternal happiness in heaven, and if incorrect, you are unavoidably annihilated anyway. Or, as Pascal said, if you gain, you gain all. If you lose, you lose nothing. This pragmatic approach to theology may sound reasonable on the surface. However, there are several implicit, invalid assumptions in Pascal's argument. Firstly, it is assumed and implied that belief in the existence of God, heaven, and hell is as simple as turning on a switch. Even if I fully agreed with Pascal's premise, the act of genuinely believing and having true religious faith in no way follows from it. I cannot simply force myself to believe in something that hasn't been sufficiently demonstrated and proven beyond any shadow of doubt. Without seeing the pearly gates with my own eyes, without feeling a lake of fire with my own feet, without meeting my Maker personally and having experiential knowledge of exactly who that is and what that means, I cannot simply force myself to believe, and there will always remain a nagging and legitimate skepticism. Also, Pascal bases his belief on a selfish wager, hoping to save his own skin, without acknowledging the fact that an omniscient God would see right through such a scheme. If the impetus for our faith and the basis for our belief is simply a selfish, outcome-based decision, how could an omniscient God accept this as a legitimate conviction? Furthermore, Pascal commits the black-and-white fallacy by presenting a false dilemma between belief in the Abrahamic God and non-belief in any God whatsoever. There have been thousands of religions throughout recorded history, each having differing conceptions of a God or gods and differing descriptions of afterlife realms but none of these are considered in Pascal's wager. For example, the gods Kali and Odin promise finite, semi-blissful afterlives to their devotees, and not the infinite, perfect paradise of heaven promised by the Abrahamic god. Or Buddhists, for example, argue that non-attachment, not belief, 
is the ultimate epistemic attribute necessary for achieving nirvana. Pascal's wager attempts and fails to create a dichotomy between the two extremes of the Abrahamic god and godless atheists, while leaving out every other possibility. When given a false choice, rather than picking either alternative, we always maintain the option of refusing to participate. That is why I personally practice and advocate radical agnosticism when it comes to religion and other metaphysical matters. I would define this as the refusal to believe in anything unproven. In my experience, skepticism and doubt have shown themselves time and again to be invaluable filters for finding truth, whereas belief and blind faith have only shown themselves to be vehicles for propagating unevidenced falsehoods and delusions. Belief, or having faith, are very different standards from knowing, or having proof. A god that hides its existence and endows its creations with the ability for skepticism and doubt would be quite the cruel prankster to condemn us to eternal hellfire for exercising these qualities. Hinging infinite rewards in heaven, or infinite punishment in hell, on such a random and weak epistemic function seems rather superficial and unfounded. Judging eternal souls based on our deeds, our character, or karma, all make much more sense than judging us purely on what we did or didn't believe during our lifetimes. Wouldn't a god who endowed us with faculties like logic and reason understand that true belief can only be attained through a genuine acceptance of a preponderance of evidence? Why would God require such a finicky concession like blind faith from his creations in the first place? Of all possible attributes to judge our eternal souls, why would belief in a specific deity be the ultimate requirement of every human life? How could an omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent creator not see through such a self-serving epistemic stance as Pascal's wager? Why would God reward such behavior while simultaneously condemning those who would instead practice rational skepticism and honest introspection? Why would God even create flawed finite beings to later judge and divide into infinite heavenly and hellish afterlife realms? Ultimately, Pascal's wager serves no purpose beyond attempting to fool and appease a petty and very human conception of God into your favor. Personally, I simply cannot force myself to believe in something that doesn't automatically compel me to do so through empirical or experiential evidence. I would absolutely like to live in a heavenly afterlife and avoid eternal damnation just like anyone else. But if the only way to allegedly achieve such a fate is to pretend that I wholeheartedly believe in the God of Abraham, when in fact I have legitimate skepticism and valid doubts, then that would be dishonest and superficial. Rather than wager my eternal soul on Pascal's shaky grounds, I gamble instead that God might be sympathetic to my concerns, and understanding of the human condition. I gamble that God might appreciate my struggle to make sense of the mystery of existence, and not condemn me for my confusion. I gamble that remaining radically agnostic in metaphysical matters will actually serve me better than any foregone conclusions. And I gamble that waiting until after my death to determine what I believe about the afterlife makes far more sense than deciding now.